Okay, so hi again, everybody. Um, guys, I guess I need um, a name for this little stupid show that I'm doing. Let's call it like Quarantine Baking with Methuselah on account of this long ass beard that has grown on my face being locked in the house for two weeks. Anyway, my sister Mary has taken up bread baking and I've been um, baking bread for many years, as a lot of you know. And I'm not a fancy bread baker, it's very, um, it's very grandma bread. I don't get all artisan and stuff like that. But one that I like to make is um, a honey wheat bread. And I use, a, I like to use about a third of the wheat in the recipe to be um, freshly milled, um, hard red, hard white um, wheat. And I do that in my, um, the mill that, uh, a mill attachment for my mixer. Anyway, so I'm going to mill up some wheat, and then we're going to bake some bread. All right, so the wheat is all milled. Um, I've got a couple cups of it here. So we are ready to make bread. Okay, so let's see how this disaster plays out. All right, so I have my milled wheat that um, I did just a little bit ago. Turns out I made about, I don't know, about a cup and a half. Um, the total amount of flour in um, this recipe is about six and a half cups. Um, yep, so I got a cup and a half of um, whole wheat flour. So, I'm going to start by scalding one cup of milk. So, while that's heating up, I'm going to add to it a tablespoon of sea salt. And about a quarter cup of raw, unfiltered honey. Okay, so we're ready to combine our ingredients and I'm gonna use my KitchenAid mixer to do the hard work and do the kneading, but I'll also show you how to um, knead it by hand. We've had a really bad day making bread and um, beating the piss out of it. Um, it can really help you get some aggression out of it. Anyway, so I've got about six and a half cups of flour in, um, in my bowl. This, I've got a cup of scalded milk, a cup of water, really more like a third of a cup of raw unfiltered honey, and a tablespoon of um, sea salt. And then here is my roughly three teaspoons of active dry yeast with about a quarter cup of water and just a little sprinkle of, um, of white sugar, <clears throat> just to give the yeast some life. For the oil component of the recipe, I'm gonna use a quarter cup of vegetable oil today, but you could do, um, you could melt a tablespoon of butter and a tablespoon of shortening into the, um, uh, into the scalded milk mixture if you want. All right. Uh, everything into the center of the bowl with the flour and next to the oil. And now the yeast mixture. You want to let that yeast sit um, probably five minutes or so. Um, let it get going. Eventually it would all mix on its own. Um, the dough hook would eventually pick up all of it, but I get impatient, so every once in a while I'll stop it and just kind of push the flour around and just kind of keep it um, moving through the dough. It 
it's just the gluten is just starting to develop. Um, but I'm finding that the flour is still um, quite sticky. And when it's done with the kneading, its texture should kind of feel like, well, the skin on a baby's bottom. So I'm going to just let this bad boy run on the mixer. On the low setting, um, the dough has stopped sticking to the sides of the bowl. Um, the insides of the bowl have become completely clean, but they're close enough. And I just let this run for, I'll go do other stuff for a few minutes in the kitchen, wash up dishes or whatever, um, and let it run for at least 10 minutes. But it's going to be about the texture of the dough when it's finished, and I'll show you that in a minute. So I'll check the dough as it's going along and kind of see how it feels. It's still a little bit sticky and I think I've really got, I probably could have added a little bit more flour here. But by and large, I think it feels like it is pretty good. It feels nice and it's really elastic. So let's take it out. Fold it in on itself like this. Right. So you just kind of fold it in on itself and then push forward. Mary, I know you've been doing your bread by hand, and so I know you know what this feels like. It's really kind of a fun way to do it. So anyway, when the dough is all set, um, this is the whole wheat, so it's got, you can really see the, the wheat in it. It has a nice color. It's a little darker um, than dough would normally be just because of the amount of the unfiltered honey that I put in. So, uh, let's move this stuff out of the way. All right, so there's our finished dough. Now I'm gonna take a large bowl. All right, so inside of the bowl, I'm gonna rub down with some shortening. You can use butter if you want it. This is just to keep the surface of the dough, um, to keep the surface of the dough from drying out while it's rising. So you've got your oiled bowl. You can oil it too, actually. You can oil, butter, I'm using shortening. Any of those is fine. All right, so you wanna cover the entire ball of dough. <clears throat> I put a little bit of plastic wrap over the top. Rising dough does not like, um, it doesn't like drafts. Alright, so we're going to let, want this dough to rise till doubled in bulk or more, um, 45 minutes to an hour, depending on the temperature of the room. Um, the longer the proof, the longer the rise, the better the flavor. All right, there we go. So I just set it in the microwave, close the door, um, and just let it sit. See you in an hour.
All right, so the dough has had a chance to rise to double in bulk. Um, today, I'm just going to um, punch it down once and then reshape it into the loaf pans. Um, you could also do a second bowl rising if you wanted to. You would just punch this down, um, kind of reshape it into the bowl, make sure it's covered with you know the shortening all the way around, cover it, and let it rise again for another 45 minutes or an hour. Then punch it down and put it into um, the pans. I like to do the, um, I usually do do the second rise. Um, I just like the effect it has on the crumb. It gives the bread a little bit finer crumb. But, um, so I'm going to uh, punch it down and pull it out. Let's get rid of this. is the punch down dough. I'm gonna do, I think, just I'm gonna turn this just into two loaves. It's a pretty good size ball. I like Pyrex glass uh, pans. These are like one and a half quart. I like them they're a little narrower and taller than most regular bread pans, so I, I just kind of like the proportion of the loaf um, that comes out of these pans. Um, but this ball of dough really is big enough where I could probably make three loaves. Sometimes I'll make three smaller loaves, sometimes um, two that are larger, um, depending on how long you let them rise in the pan. Um, you know, it, you can end up with a smaller loaf or a bigger loaf, it's just kind of, you know, if I make stuff for my mom and dad, I tend to make more loaves out of the recipe that are smaller, just because that's how they're more likely to eat it. Um, other times, if I'm making bread for someone who's got kids, I might let the dough rise longer and make for bigger slices for, for hungry youngsters or something like that. Today. But um, So here is the dough, and it feels really nice. I mean, it's... It's beautiful. Anyway, so now I'm gonna split the dough in half. Um, if I'm feeling real fussy, I will make, um, I'll put it all on my kitchen scale and make sure they're all identical in weight so it'll be close in size, but it doesn't really matter, does it? Uh, anyway, so punch these out, lay them into the bread pans. Make sure that the dough is con in contact with all four sides of your bread pan, and that helps to support the dough as it rises. I really could have made this into three. This could easily have been three, three loaves, but they're going to be kind of big, hearty loaves of wheat. All right, so. There those are. So now I'm gonna preheat the oven um, to 400. And when they go into the oven, and I'll go over, um, I'll get back to that, okay. See on the other side of this rice. All right, so our loaves have risen in the pan. I think they look pretty good. Here's a good example of why I was telling me about why I measured the, um, why I weigh the dough before I separate it. I'm terrible at, um, you know, getting those loaves even and after baking bread for like 25 years, 30. Um, I think I got it right, but I never do. So, all right, so anyway, so um, these are ready to go in the oven. I preheated it to 400. I'm gonna bake them in, on the center rack at 400 degrees for 15 minutes. And then when the 15 minutes is up, I'm gonna lower the temperature to um, 325 and bake it for another 20 minutes.
And so much has changed since I first bent over and put that in the oven. The important thing being, I deleted the last segment of this video. So this bread is neither piping hot nor is it any longer fresh. But it still looks the same. Um, when I took it out of the oven, I took it out of the damn pan and put it on a rack so it looked a little something like this. It cooled off, I put it in a bag. Um, I like to eat it about 45 minutes to an hour after um, uh, after it comes out of the oven. It's just so fresh. We'll put a little butter or your favorite spread on there. It's fantastic. Um, let's see how it looks. Nice, nice even grain or uh, even crumb. Still delicious, a little toast, make incredible French toast. See you next time. And I won't delete here. You know, I'm new to this. Don't judge. Over the next number of months, I'm not going to reply and to reply. It's the next day, and I've discovered that I have thrown, <laughs> I have deleted the final segment of my my brand. <laughs> Hey, boy, get her.